to a momentous occasion to celebrate the launch of an extraordinary mathematics workbook named Maths and I, Programmed Mathematics. I am your host, Danielle Robinson Phillips, and I'm truly honored to guide you through this special event. Before we dive into the main program, we have a few housekeeping announcements to ensure that everyone has an enjoyable and smooth experience. So, safety. If there's a fire, earthquake, or any other calamity, don't follow me as I'll be panicking. It's probably a better idea to walk calmly to the present, to, to the nearest exit. You can look for the one closest to you, there's one at the back of the hall where you more or less would have entered and one to the left of the hall, extended down to the car park where you came in. The washrooms are conveniently located at the back of the hall, just outside the door. Feel free to use them at any time. If your mobile phones are on a setting that is silent or in vibrant mode, it will show due respect to others in your midst. Immediately following the presentations at the end, Ms. Melka Robinson Reed will be available for book signing session in a lovely little area. So feel free to get your books and get your aut autograph. Enjoy a selection of refreshments and beverages at the backstage after the event. Please be mindful of any waste and use the provided recycling bins. Finally, we want to express our gratitude for joining us today. Your presence means a lot to us and the author, Mrs. Melka Robinson Reed. Thank you for your attention for the housekeeping announcements. We hope you have a wonderful time at this book launch. Enjoy the presentation. Daughter, celebrate the power of mathematics and make this event a memorable one. We now invite um, Matthew. Robinson to do the anthem and a little song of gratitude. Come on all up, let's welcome him. <laughs> Followed by prayer. Good afternoon, everyone. Can all stand, please? As we sing the national anthem. We can sing it together. Forge from the love of liberty in the fire of hope and prayer with boundless days in our destiny we solemnly declare. Side by side we stand Islands of the blue Caribbean Sea, this our native land, we pledge our lives to thee. Here every creed and race finds an equal place, and may God bless our nation. Here every creed and race finds an equal place, and may God bless our nation. Thank you. Can we see them? I now invite Daniel Robinson to offer a word of prayer. Good evening, brethren. Before I pray, I need to say some stuff. First thing I want to do is to thank the Almighty God for being in the presence of all these wonderful people. Why it is wonderful? It's seen all the ages. Seen a sitting like me, seen little ones. I ain't seen no babies, but little one is little enough to be a little baby still. And for this I'm thankful, right? 
I'm thankful that I'm in, I'm in the same building with Patrick George. Why? The last time I sat in a building with him, he was, a pres he was my president in the Color Hall Village Council. That is more than about 20, 30 years ago. Am I correct, my brother? No. I could go into some history as a why I'm so thankful, but I think putting him as president at that time has recovered Patrick from something. I think my sister understands where I'm coming from. Praise the Lord. Praise All right. The other thing I want to thank, really thank for is God, because he is the author and the finisher of all faith, isn't it? Yes. He was the first author. He is the one that, as the author, he proves to us that he is the author. So he wrote 10 commandments with his fingers, right? On stones. Why stones? Stones is forever. Can't rotten. All right? The next time he wrote on the ground, remember he said he is the I am, right? They caught a woman caught in adultery and bring her to judgment. And he write on the ground, showing he's the same God who is the I am. He write in dust. Why did he write in the dust? When the woman sinned, been forgiven, he blew it away. And he remember it no more. Today, God is still altering two people. He used six, six men to write the Bible. Today, he's using people to uplift the human race. So you have a wonderful lady named Melka Robinson to author a book, Matt and I. He's still using people today to author for him. And he can use any one of you. Let's put your mind to doing it. Anything you think you can do it. So because he said there's nothing new under heaven, none of us can claim allegiance or rights or copyrights to anything we write because he's the author and the finisher of our feet. So with this in mind, I want to stand and pray we can thank God for all that he has done and for his wonderful goodness. The room is smelling nice with food and stuff, and so that I'm happy too. Amen? Let's pray, almighty and merciful God. We are thankful for this moment in time where we can celebrate this moment with your author, Melka. Friends, family, well-wishers, a well-mixed audience uh, seems to be really, really present and welcoming. But Lord, just as you alter your word and I gave it to Moses to carry it to the people, it's so the folks who are here today, as they leave here filled with enjoyment and, uh, and being able to be with my dear sister who is the author, they too will take these same books and carry it to our world. For this book, Lord, is something that helps you and to be go. It's something that helps teachers, help parents, help us to build a future. Because children is the future, and this book was designed to help youths, adults, and even children. Father God, wash us from self and sin. And Lord, the Spirit, the of all of us, so we can do that which you have called us to do. Tell you all of your love, and you will do that through this book. And other books that my sister will author. May that be our will and desire to support this book and support you in the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right, so we'll now have the song of gratitude. Great is thy faithfulness. No, I don't mind. All right. Yeah. Five nine. Uh, no, thank you all about it. Five five nine. The song is now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voice. Let me see the hands of those who doesn't know it. So everybody know it, right? So you want to sing it with me? It's a song of thankfulness. I don't know if you have it on your phone, but I have it on mine under the SDA hymnal, a hearing hymnal, 559. Now thank we all our God 
with heads and hands and voices. O wondrous things that done, in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms had blessed us on our way, a countless gift of love, and still is ours today. O may, O may this bounteous God through all our life be near us, with ever joyful heart and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in His grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ill in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who reigns with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, who murdered and have mad for us it was his now and shall be evermore. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much for inviting God's spirits for a safe and successful function. Now, as educators, most of us here are educators, right? I, as educators, this was the first week of school. Teachers were generally checking with each other how was the first week of school. And uh, one of my colleagues in the high school, he shared that, that his timetable have him a little bit stressed, the amount of periods he has to teach. And uh, what subject do you think? He was math. And I said, well, we have a problem in Tobago because it's not the first time I've been hearing it. So I started to do some research to see what is happening with maths in Trinidad and Tobago. So I found an old article from about 2021 by Professor Theodore Lewis. And he highlighted the fact that Trinidad and Tobago have not participated in a TIMS assessment. Now, TIMS assessment is a trends in international mathematics and science study. And countries in the world would usually ascribe to them to have an idea of how their students are performing. And he shared that 2018 results showed that the Asian countries dominated, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, Taiwan, etc. So i trying to figure out so what's going on with, you know, Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean. Countries like the US, UK, and Canada, they ranked about 11 to 5th based on the age categories. Now, the test is administered to grade 3, grade 4, grade 3, which is about standard 2 and form 2 students. So, and additionally, 7% of the students reach the advanced benchmark. Advanced benchmark, these students can apply their understanding and knowledge in a variety of relatively complex situations and explain their reasonings. That was among the standard two. And when they went on to grade, grade um, form, form two, we saw that there was a little dip. The low benchmark stats show 92%. Many countries are educating their students to the minimum proficiency, 92%, reaching that low benchmark, which is basic mathematical. And when we compare it to the Form 2, 87% were at the low benchmark, and 5% were at the advanced stage. There was a decline, 71% among the standard two to 56, and the form two. I further went on, and I got some stats from CXC. Dr. Nicole Manning, Caribbean CSEC, 
2023 results said mathematics there was a 43 percent of candidates got acceptable grades up from 37. so we we showed a little improvement the number of grade ones achieved this year in the subject was eight percent a two percent increase but she said it is still a cause for concern especially with the fact that the paper is standard and has been a standard paper from day one it's just something we have to look at so most of our students are just barely meeting the low benchmark and our country have not done that assessment we could put that little thought as to why i'm sharing all of this to thank mrs melka robinson reed for providing us the book maths and i program mathematics for upper primary we have some hope if this book can get into the hands of students and parents even adults because i myself perused it and i, I actually started to use some of the ideas auntie melka in my class right if we we have a little hope with this book and as we go on during the day we'll have a better understanding of how we can use it right <laughs> right so we'll now have a video trailer about the book right and today we're not just launching a book we're unveiling a tool that has the power to change the way we perceive and interact with the world of mathematics but before we dive into this incredible workbook let's begin by acknowledging the journey that has brought us here with the video trailer so let's enjoy before i introduce myself you need me i'll tell you why and don't shut me out before giving me a try since you were born i sped into action giving the circumference your head your weight height and heart's rhythmic vibration all the doctors needed i gave for you ensuring you were healthy and well monitored too as you developed from day to day the milk you consumed measured in ounces or liters ensured perfect temperature my numbers on the thermometer at toddler childhood puberty adolescent age even more so, math skills began to rage. Whether playing, running, swimming, beating Guinness records, or just using Amazon Prime, I became even more relevant, giving distance, amount, speed, and time. Budgeting, saving, salaries, you use me daily, especially when shopping, you employ me abusively. So I am here to prepare you. In keeping with today's trend, I've made lessons simple and easy to comprehend. I boast in preparing your children for the potential school of their choice. My flexibility allows use by teachers or parents. Once used correctly, guarantees results. My methods allow you to read, comprehend, analyze, and think critically, manipulating objects, resources, answering confidently. So, give me the opportunity. I'll be relevant and simple. I promise to guide you with every example. I promise you will be engaged in fun learning. Give maths and I a chance and your children will be shining. Mrs. Melka Robinson Reed. Please stand. Mrs. Melka Robinson Reed, please stand as we acknowledge your vision and dedication that mathematics is not just a subject to be learned but a key to unlocking the doors of critical thinking, problem solving, and innovation. A hearty round of applause. <laughs> nice. So, following along in our program, we'll have the lovely Beard Sisters performing a duet for us. I'll explain after. 
Come on up. Good night, everyone. Good evening, sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord of God. For the Lord of God is mighty, Yes, the Lord of God is omnipotent. The Lord of God, He is wonderful. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord of God. Yes, the Lord of God is mighty. The Lord of God is omnipotent. The Lord of God, He is wonderful. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord of God. For the Lord of God is mighty. Yes, the Lord of God is omnipotent. The Lord of God, He is wonderful. All praises be to the King of kings and the Lord of God. He is wonderful. All praises be to the King of kings and the Lord your God. He is wonderful.
Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. When your spirit speaks to me, 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 with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be I feel so proud of April and Blossom. And uh, what is remarkable is that these two young ladies, mom died while in childbirth, and after her death, they started singing publicly. You know, thanks for that wonderful, sensational rendition. Now, Melka Robinson Reed has not only authored math and Matt Sanai, she previously would have launched Important Moments episodic Tobago, which is also available for purchase. And I just want to share a peer-reviewed peer review from this first book. This was done by Charles Asheron. Atterton, okay, Atterton, a renowned peer reviewer. And he said, in this stunning commendamum of writing, author Melka Robinson Reed explores the very phenolo phenom phenomenology of Tobago, plumbing the depths of experience and existence on the vibrant Caribbean island through an array of stories, poems, monologues, and stage plays offering as multifarious a set of literary forms as there is an ontological and social multiplicity in the country itself. The topics and narratives are diverse um, in important moments, each self-contained and yet all brushing up against each other. The last story still lingering with the next, the current story laying the groundwork for the following, and their total sum in the end, rolling out like an enormous map. Not simply of a geographic locale, but of a state of being, an inner world shared by a populace throughout a history both beautiful and turbulent. Miss Reed, clearly writing from the heart, employs her skills as a writer to do her homeland justice as never before. Stunning, original, and masterfully crafted. I highly recommend important moments. So although we are here for the maths and I, we also have to let you know about important moments, episodic Tobago. It has some really nice poems. Yes. So, I would like to introduce a young, well, I would say young, young in heart, young in spirit, to make a tribute. Oh, no, I'll start with Mr. Stewart. Dawson Stewart. Lo siento. Hold on, hold on, hold on a minute, Dawson. I was, I was right. Yes a lady young in heart, to do a review on this book. She graced the stage before, um, right, which is Mrs. Zebra Mormigans. She's a member of the Tobago, right, she's not here? Lo siento, okay, all right. So we'll go on to Miss Wilshaw. Miss Lynette Wilshaw will make a presentation on anxiety mathematics. This lovely lady was a primary school educator, mathematics facilitator, and retired as a 
instructional coach with the Division of Education, Research, and Technology. I would like to invite the enchanting, admirable Mrs. Lynette Wilshaw to make a presentation on maths anxiety. Let's welcome her. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, where would I begin? I once had a reason to chat with an adult student who was exhibiting strange behavior in a math class. This student actually tried to avoid doing math. An excuse was always found for missing class or being late. When present, worry and panic stepped in. On doing further investigation, I realized that this student was experiencing math anxiety. Now, this is not a medical condition, but one where the individual becomes afraid of mathematics. The person loses self-confidence and begins to panic any time a situation involving the use of a mathematical skill is presented. What a pity. A solution was not readily available then. Now, this condition is a, a, as a result of undue pressure from parents, teachers, or peers. Now, the father of this student was a teacher, actually a principal. And obviously, he expected his child to excel. As such, it was pressure, licks at all. Today, I say, thank God for Mats and I. That's a programmed mathematics textbook for the upper primary school level. Undoubtedly, the author of this book, Mrs. Robinson Reed, Milka Robinson Reed, has seen the suffrage of so many children and adults doing mathematics and has come to their rescue. No longer should anyone have such an experience. Math is fun. I love it. I always say that, I tell people that I love math and I know it's fun. And according to Van de Waal, he always says, math makes sense. So parents, grandparents, <laughs> yes, Lona, <laughs> teachers, you don't have to leave without a copy of math, math and I. Now, it's late for that student, but just on time for all other children, Amen. for you and your children. So ensure that you leave with a copy of Math and I. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilshaw, for that self-reflection as to Math's anxiety. Um, just wanna share a quick fact, a quick story. Love, when you hear the word love, the first thing that comes to mind is a little heart, a little significant other. But while I was in standard five, my father taught it wise to get me involved in physical activity. So I started going tennis down at Shaw Park. Everybody know where the tennis court is? Right. So um, the coach will tell us, you know, you had to make some laps to warm up. If half the, the, the court is being used, you had to make more more laps around one. 
by the time I already done that, my water done because it's tired. So not too long after doing the, the, the sessions, they had a little tournament. The girls know nothing about tournament, but so say we had to hit the ball across the thing. So hit, when my ball not going over, and all they're saying is one love. <laughs> one love. No, I just had this, this, this thought of this thing, one love. I don't know what the love, I, I do not know what it is. One love. And even into my adulthood, I never, I would watch tennis and one time I said, what does love mean? What does it love mean? Anybody knows what they love mean? Anybody? Z love means zero. And then I start to think, but Mali sing a song, one love. No, we think one love means everybody in unity, but one love means zero love. Just wanted to share that little story and joke with you about maths. So, I mean, so now we take things for granted because kill you dead, I did not know what the one love mean. All I know, I kick in, hitting the tennis, ball, not hitting the tennis, one love, one love. Right, so just wanted to share, that's one math, math fact. Love as a word is a score of zero used in tennis since the late 1800s, right? Nice, next on our agenda is our featured speaker. This lovely woman will grace us shortly. I'd like to read her bio. Yes. So Dr. Verlin Bob Lewis is an educator cultural attache, community builder, spiritual leader, hailing from the beautiful village of Lansfamy. She has always demonstrated an interest and passion for education, community, and nation building activities to the extent that she was a recipient of the Public Service Medal of Merit Gold for Education during the 2020 National Awards Ceremony. She served in the capacities of teacher as, and principal at several primary schools in Tobago before being promoted to school supervisor one in 2006. Dr. Bob Lewis, Lewis was instrumental in the design and execution of a program entitled Teaching for the 21st Century, Creating Learner-Friendly Schools, which I was also an attendee, I must say. Shortly thereafter, she received another promotion to coordinator school supervision in the year 2007. She possesses a PhD in educational administration and M. Ed in educational administration and curriculum, and a first class honors BN and certificate in education. Dr. Bob Lovis was a recipient of the Tobago House of Assembly Award in 2008 for outstanding service in the fields of education, culture, and sports, as well as a finalist of the Trinidad and Tobago National Teacher of the Year Award 2000. She has a passion for quality and excellence, as is evidenced by the numerous professional development programs that she frequently develops and executes for principal and teachers of early childhood, primary, secondary, and tertiary level institutions. She participated in the evaluation of the Trinidad and Tobago Educational Policy 1993 to 2003. She also initiated the development of the strategic plan for the Division of Education, Tobago House of Assembly. She is responsible for the implementation of a lot of all things. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Pauline Bob Lewis. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, um, of course, we have online, online, um, so, right, so pleasant, good evening to all. Beautiful people, give yourselves a round of applause for coming to this rare, beautiful function. Glad to have you here. No, I, I, I am a, what to call me, an old stager because I was here last time. <laughs> I was here at the launch of the last book. So when, 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 I call you, I could call you Melka, sometimes I forget yeah. to say Miss Reed. <laughs> I, said, I said, me again? But she said, no, I want you, I want you to come. And I said, okay, all right, once I could, I would. And you know it's difficult for me to move. But I am moving much better these days, thank God. 
God has been a great God, isn't he? He's a good God. He's a great God. So even as I, I, I wondered what to say, and I pulled my old book, and I said, uh-huh, because I read this every now and then. But, so I want to start by one of her poems on page 61. Those of you who have this book, go back to page 61. You remember one page 61, because you look at me. It says, an ode to mathematics. And I, I read this before, and I, even though I had to look to find it today, I couldn't remember. I, said, well, but I couldn't find my book, and then I found it, I said, right. And it said, behold her, poised among the rest, standing elegantly as the best. Behold her beauty, relish her loyalty, please explore her versatility. It is an art that facilitates design and craft. Mathematics is fun. It is an instrument for integration and indeed for life's encounters. Mathematics is patterns. Just look at designs in the environment. Mathematics is relationships. Algebra reflects this. Tessellations and reflections, rotations and translation are foundations of design, manifestations of imagination, propellers of wisdom. A requirement for many subject areas. It is developmental in nature. Demands a hierarchical structure, fosters working together. Mathematics is a tool for use at home, work, or school. A requirement for further education. With it, one can never be a fool. Its games provide one with fun. So, learn to do it while you're young. Give her a round of applause. And I have, I have many bests in this book, but I think this is the best best, especially now. And I remember, and I just want to refresh, I think Lynette was here for the last time. I would have added to what I had the last time. Because she had, I, I, I had, M, when I was trying to, to, to make an acronym for her name, M Marvelous. But no, I've added mathematician. <laughs> I had I intelligent, but I have added inspiration. A love, but she's a leader, a leader, great leader. C, caring, but she's also compassionate and charming. A, I had amazing, but she is ambitious. <laughs> Give her a round of applause. And that, <laughs> thank you. I write. I, I write all the time. I write different things. Some I might be able to tell you. I do speech band all the time. Some would know some. I do calypsos, not wind down and touch the ground. None like that. Up, um, really uplifting <laughs> songs, I want to call them, in calypso rhythm. So I write, thank you very much. And now that we are here with you, I think you are giving all of us inspiration to write, write, and write again. So I want to say congratulations to you. And I, I think I could call her my friend. And because in education, we work together, and she always come, and she didn't have to say, Dr. Bobo, she used to say it, for being, you know, extra polite. And I saw the genius in this lady. Because when we were looking for lecturers, and she must even remember that. Lecturers to work at UTT, lecturers, oh, you remember. Lecturers to work in different programs. And what, what I sent the CVs down, but there was Melka Melka, and like, no, nobody knew her or about her. But I didn't select, I had to send it for other people to select. So they would say, well, I handpick. I didn't, maybe I did, you know. <laughs> but, but when it went down to Trinidad, to the committees, they selected her. And I think she did a great job in all the spaces that she worked. <laughs> Congratulations. A woman of patience. Because I knew she had started this book, Math and I, for a long time. 
somehow I believe it, it, it started before this one. And, but this one, you know, sometimes you're in a race and two of you going down neck and they can kind of one pass you. And I think that is what this one did. Pass and end up winning the race. But I think the winners... Okay. Right. Great. And this, although this one is called important moments, I think this is an important moment here today. I'm sure you'd agree with me. So I'm talking about the patient because I know she was working on it for a long time and maybe working and stopping and working and going again. But now that is, when I saw it, and she said, when you see it, and my, she came, what, came into my, to my gate, and I said, wow. And whoever the graphic designer is, did a great work. You did it for yourself? Oh, my Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Your patience, your determination. You have a lot to teach all of us here this evening. Your love. That, that love, 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 love. Love for teaching, love for children, love to see every child developed. And we saw that when she taught students, I'm talking about teachers, <laughs> teachers at the university level. I have to scratch my head a little bit before I say anything else. Because sometimes the hard work that people like Melka put in in, 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 in the work in that, in those programs, I'm not sure. Melka, maybe we have some more work to do. Maybe. She's a, she's a, she's a book woman. I think she is. I think, I think she is. I, I, yes. And she, she can't stop. Well, once you're there, you, you, you can't stop. So that, 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 that passion for mathematics. And it's a subject area that people are afraid of. And somebody mentioned that earlier. I think it was Lynette. You know, they, like they have, there's a fear of math. And I see Bernadette um, Boom Stewart here. I know she's one too. You know, the, the mathematics people pushing the mathematics all the time. But why is that fair? But when you look at maths and I program mathematics, I think I too had to go back and, <laughs> and look at some. Because it invites you. So then uh, it's inviting all of you, so don't leave here without a copy. There's a commercial. And, it, like, uh, and I said, well, I better take my pen and, and start to re refresh my brain in some of them. It invites you to go and work at it. Parents, make sure that your children and will I have grandchildren. I actually have one great grand now that is 13 days old. <laughs> the, the, oh my God. Really the joy of my heart. You see it in my face when I say that. Well, I don't know what she would have to, have to get one and put it up for her. Because all the others have one granddaughter with a disability. I'm hoping that one day she could use it. I'm still praying that that will happen. I have a, a, a granddaughter at Bishops in Form 3, but I still have, I think I'm buying another copy for her. That's for her to go back because she's not excelling it. Oh, God, I'm bad talking, honey. I'm not excelling in the maths that I think, in the way I think she should. So I'm going to get another, this is mine. So I'll get another copy for her. So that passion, and the passion came out in the book. Even as she prepared it and she put all the resources, what you need, the equipment, everything is there. And if you have parents and elders here this evening who may have challenges and you feel that you, you, you may not have uh, you, you done your maths in the way that you, you know, you, you too can buy one and start working at it. It is a book for everybody. It's one little problem I have with you, Miss Melka, and I'm going to tell you is what. I see in the front of the book that you wrote it to, to, for Trinidad and Tobago. I said, nah. Why, should, why did she say that? This is not for Trinidad and Tobago. 
This is for the Caribbean. This is for the world. Because how it is structured, any child in any part of the work, so that's the only few lines that I have a problem with. Could it Yeah. Yes. In Trinidad and Tobago? Yes. Don't limit yourself, darling. Don't. Because this book can serve any child. Any child in the Caribbean. Any child, any part of the world. And I want to recommend it to students anywhere. That's just the little, that's the only thing that I found. I listened to Donnell and I too went doing my research and at one time I used to analyze C, 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 and K, all of them. And we need to, we have to do better in mathematics in Trinidad and Tobago, especially in Tobago, because we're still lagging a little bit behind Trinidad in the performance of our students in math. As we, and well, we're not even doing peace and pulls again. Like, we're not even doing that again to see where we measure with the rest of the world. With this book and the practice that students will get, and I believe, um, so she's looking young and sprightly, I believe she will go and do one for the lower level. I just believe so. So that we will have them, <laughs> I will have it for, for the other levels as well so that we could compete at the international level in all those, in, 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 in all those the, the Thames, the Pearls, the Pizza, and all those areas. So don't limit yourself at all. It, it is scholarly in terms of its preparation, well done, color-coded, interesting, and inviting, and the graphics as I spoke about before. I want to see every child in every school with a copy of these. I want to see parents because you see, and I like it, it's easy to work with. And I don't want anybody to go and photocopy this book. And I, I don't mind if this goes on him. Don't take the lady's book and photocopy it. Buy one. Let them purchase a book. And you know, there, there's something in, in the copyright, if it's for educational purposes, so people, be, they just go on and open the book and spoil it over the, and finish up all the ink in the photocopy. Let them purchase a book so that the child will have one to work with. And as I said before, anybody who is struggling with mathematics can use this book. Because I, I, I like the approach and, well, Ms. Ms. Boom Stewart and, and Lynette and the scaffolding approach that you use. So you build. You constru anybody in construction here? I know some of your brothers used to do construction. How you, you, you move, you start at one level and you move up. And that is how she prepared this book. So anybody could use this book. I recommend it wholeheartedly. Even as Donna, yes, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And in doing the research, we realize, when, and you're looking at many, many writers, and if you go there, oh my God, thousands of, of, of research articles you would find on why children don't do well at math. And you see, that concept teaching, the teaching of the concepts, yes, Mrs. Douglas, that the, the con, con, they're not grounded in the concepts. And if you're not grounded, you will just get an answer, write something, and get it wrong. And I like the approach where, and, and, and she, as she said in the book, leave them, leave them, give them a chance. Let them learn on their own. Because we're looking at taking children to the higher end of the hierarchy. And we're going to go to Blooms or whoever and, and all of that. You need to know all of that. But the, where, they, where they are making decisions on their own, where they are problem solving on their own, and not you just forcing them things down their throat every day they like, and then the throat, they have no space to hold it. So we want to make sure that they could learn. We want to make them into independent learners. And this book allows that opportunity for students to grow and develop as they use it. So a masterpiece, another masterpiece. I'm, I'm, I tell you I love this one. 
I don't know how much you have to vote. <laughs> but both are great books. But this one is the one that would help every student, every struggling student, every student who is afraid of mathematics, every student who has difficulty in grasping the concepts that are being taught. This book is the book for you. So I recommend it. And I hope that all, all of us, all of us will purchase one for our niece or our nephew or our grandchild or great grand, as I have I just told you, and anybody else that you think requires one. Milka, I want you to stand and applaud her. Congratulations. Really. And those beautiful girls who sang yes, yes, yes. I want you all to say yes, yes, yes to this book. Yes, yes, yes to this book. Congratulations. And keep on writing, darling. You've been doing a wonderful job. And I think you have inspired me to, to continue my writing. I think I have two manuscripts just struggling. But now that I say, oh gosh, I can finish one, two, and mine still just languishing and calm. I have to get on board. I think you have inspired me to want to get on board. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Glad to be here yet another time. This, it has been seven, six years, seven years. 2017 and 320 and three, six, six, six years. And I'm sure before the next six years, we'll see some other book. From, from this week. I hope within that time she might I'll ask her to call maybe no, no one then and say, go, go, keep on writing, Vulin, keep on writing. That she would keep motivating me to want to continue my, write, my writing. Congratulations again. God bless you and God bless all of us. Dr. Bob, we are extremely gratified by your stunning presentation as we celebrate the endeavors of Mrs. Malcolm Robinson Reed. In light of that, we'll have April coming up to perform a solo for us. Let's relax and be entertained by this talented young lady. In the darkest hour, when I cannot breathe, fear is on my chest, the weight of the world on me. Everything is crashing down, everything I had known. When I wonder if I'm all alone, I remember. I remember you have always been faithful to me. I remember, I remember even when my own eyes could not see you were there, always there. I will lift my eyes, even in the pain, above all the lies, I know you can make a way, I've seen giants fall, I've seen mountains move, I've seen waters pop because of you, I remember I remember you have always been faithful to me. I remember, I remember even when my own eyes could not see you were there. Always there I can't stop thinking about 
I can't stop thinking about I can't stop thinking about your goodness goodness I can't stop thinking about I can't stop thinking about I can't stop thinking about your goodness goodness I can't stop thinking about I can't stop thinking about I can't stop thinking about your goodness goodness I remember Thank you very much, April. An amazing performance. We'll now have the author introduction and interview. So over to you, the beautiful Avian Parks. Patricia. Lo siento. Patricia Nicholson. Good afternoon, everyone. And congratulations, Mrs. Milka Robinson-Reed. I feel honored to be here to chat with you about your newest publication, Max and I. So I want you to tell us, how long have you been, let's start off by you know, telling us about you writing. How long have you been writing? I have been writing since I was nine years old. And not only writing, I wrote and I had children and adults attend concerts. I can recall at 10 years, nine or 10 years, I, I had a drama, a, a play, and I invited the villagers. I was living at Old Road at the time. I invited the villagers to come to this concert. And I used their children, and we had a wonderful occasion. So it's since then I had been writing. I love the stage. I love directing. Okay. Right? And so my writing skills started from then. And then having my mother telling, me, telling us um, some African stories, that influenced me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What inspired Matsanai? Oh, Matsanai came a long way. No, having been in primary school, I loved maths. But by the time I got to secondary school, I got lost along the way. Okay. And it's not until I went to college I realized what my problem was. My problem was I did not understand directed numbers. You would know directed numbers like a minus and a minus and add an craziness <laughs> at the time. And I can recall, honestly, I remember we were doing a test and I was in the sea and I started to cover from my friend. And she took her hand and she covered it. And I started to cry because I felt as her friend she shouldn't do me that. <laughs> right? And uh, so having gone to teacher's training college, and I had a wonderful, inspiring lecturer who took his time to teach us mathematics. He took us way back to primary school, yeah. and he could have gone fast because we were now advancing age, more mature, so yes. the thinking would be right. Yes. And having done it with him, I, I can recall when, when 
I don't know. He inspired me because when he got into the root of everything, he was squatting in front of the board. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. So having excelled in the maths at, at, at Val St. Teachers College, I decided there and then, I am going to do something when I get back home to help all Tobago students who had problems like me in mathematics. Yes. And that is what I did. Because my question would have, following that would have been, who is maths and I specifically for? It is for, predominantly for children, 9, 10, 11, 12, form one, form two, form three. Because the maths that is done in secondary school should be the same maths that they do in primary school, right? And it's also for parents. Parents can help their children. The only problem that the parent may have is to provide the resources for the children to construct their own knowledge. But I have in the book a page where I have outlined the different resources that they would have to procure, right, in order to do each lesson. Right, so that's it. <laughs> um, in terms of the process of producing this second publication, because you have another, what was the process like preparing Maths and I? How was the process? You said it was long in coming. How was the process? Well. As I said, when I answered, uh, when I spoke to Dr. Bob, the, there was a book before it, different from that one. The content may be the same, but the lessons are different. Because I don't like to stay on one method all the time, you know, but the content is the same. So I had to write over the book because it disappeared from the pen drive, yes. right? Yes. So How was I that? When it, when it disappeared, how you uh, felt? <laughs> oh, Real disappointing. Yeah. And I decided I wasn't going to do it over. Right. At that time. But after five years, I decided, Melka, you have to realize your dream. Right. And so I started to do maths and I. So much for realizing your dream. Congratulations. And, and Even in the I midst had, of it. Right. Congrats. And then I had a niece. Yes. Her sister. Who was my rock? She was my tower of strength. Because the book is complicated in terms of the graphics in it. You know, sometimes when you um, when you make, if you make a mistake and you need to change something, sometimes the graphics kept moving up and down. And Akina, where are you? Yeah. She also was my tower of strength, okay. right? Is Sophie here? Yeah. Yes. Sometimes I went to Sophie because I am not technologically savvy. Okay. So I had to depend on these wonderful young people. Sophie, Danali, my niece, and Akina. Yes. Yeah, right. So an entire village, an yes. entire village. Yes. <laughs> so in terms of, well, I know you, you mentioned a few, but what, what was one of the more or the most challenging aspects or thing when producing Mats and I? What was the Your most greatest ch challenge that you encountered? The greatest challenge was the organization of the book. And this is where Danali, my niece, helped me. And Danali was also the ed editor. So after I wrote the book, I did my own editing. And as usual, Ms. Wilshire will tell you, anything I write or she write, we always check with each other yes. to make sure we don't have any mistakes. So after I was finished writing the book, and as I told you, my strength is in English. <laughs> and right. writing. Yes. But I will still ask somebody because I like perfection. Yeah. Right? So Danali, Danali did a, listen. <laughs> Danali worked herself to a frazzle to get me to finish this book before this term. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She really assisted. Uh, math and I, mm -hmm. Maths and I, isn't your first book as I previously mentioned. Mm -hmm. You have another entitled Important Fun Moments, Moments yes. Episodic Tobago. Mm -hmm. Are there plans to write any more books? 
Well, I realized I would have to because I write. Anytime I have nothing to do, I would write. When there are issues that arise, I try to write. But I try to stay away from the political side of things. <laughs> Understandably so. <laughs> But where can, where can we find anyone desirous of purchasing both books? Where can we find your books? Um, the important moments is at Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. But this one is at Amazon. And can we come anywhere in Tobago, Trinidad? Yeah, important. Mats and I. Yes. I alone have the book on sale. And if anybody wants, I... I didn't purchase much. I didn't have the funds to do it. And most of the books that I have, they're already gone because people paid down and like people love the book, it appears. Yes. Right? So if you need books, you just tell me tonight. I'll take the names and then I'll order, you know, because it is very costly to. <laughs> It is very costly to go through customs with them, and it must come through customs. Okay. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Milka Robinson Reed, congratulations Thank on you. your newest book and God's continued blessing. Right. I wish to commend you on your beautiful face. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so very much. Right. 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 We'll do some tributes. We'll do some tributes. First on our to-do list is Dawson Stewart. Dawson Stewart is a past student in the class where Mrs. Reed would have had a 100% pass rate for the then call common entrance. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll go with Dr. Um. <laughs> Mrs. Deborah Moore McGinn's. She'll do the first tribute. Thanks. Let's welcome her. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. My problem is that I was relying on my brain. My brain tells me six o'clock and I'm early. I'm so surprised when I walk in here. And I made a vow that I would always check my invitation before I leave, before I prepare. And I didn't do it today. I do apologize. I am really embarrassed. I, I really was commending myself at how, how early I was. <laughs> so I did a review, and I'm proud of it. But uh, the place at which the program has gone, I think I may be out of step. So I'll just try to condense it as best as possible. Is that OK, madam? Why do people write books? They see a need. They have information. They like to write and collate. They are in a profession for some years and have built up a formidable amount of knowledge. They want to inspire, motivate, entertain, empower, simplify, and share their knowledge. Some of us also want to do a record to leave for posterity a legacy. All this and more would have inspired Milka to produce another book. This time a more weighty and challenging topic. 
I think it was very ambitious of her, but she has accomplished what she set out to do in the production of this book, Mats and I. It is a proud moment, not only for her, but for the Tobago Writers Guild, because Milka is a founding member of the Guild. We are all proud at this accomplishment. <laughs> Milka explains her credentials at page no, Roman numeral one of her book which includes her extensive global mathematical experience spanning a period of 43 years. It is, no, it is a no-brainer that after such a period chock full with all kinds of experiences, teaching, monitoring, and training teachers, any perceptive tutor in Tobago would have seen a need and would have developed a phenomenal body of information to address that need. Milka must have identified that there are people to motivate, empower, and more than that, to explain things to in simple language that they could understand and learn. I gather this is exactly what she intended. Most important, Milka likes to write. She's a writer. Tremendous, a tremendous amount of interest in this book is generated from the title and cover of the book right through to the last page. The design is sure meant to attract the attention and enthusiasm of the little people that they are her main target. Plus, the get-up and antics of the main protagonist on the book, watch him. All that get up there surely will increase the interest young adults would have in the book. Many of us need to go back to the very basics that are in this book to overcome our fear and trepidation, our shortcomings in maths. Raise your hand. In the short space of time I received this book from her and studied it, I know and understand the concept and terms in unit one, notation and numeration, so much that I believe I can now teach it myself. <laughs> the design not only fascinated me in that, the, in that colorful yellow, blue, and red, which would inspire ownership and suggest to me that the young ones will indeed gravitate to it and trust it for guidance and help when needed. I must say that the title of the book had my interest, Mats and I. I said, why not Mats and me? <laughs> that is because I was accustomed to hear people saying, you see that Mats and me? Not me, and <laughs> not me and Mats, no? Mats and me. We hear that all the time. I soon worked out that Milka took the more positive approach. Mats and I are great friends. Mats and I go hand in hand. Mats and I understand each other. It reflects a great collaboration between the mats that spring, spring forth from the pages of her book and the learner. But not only the learner independently, which is one of its strong points, but the teacher as well, and the parent, and the entire class. In other words, the book can be used by the student himself, by himself, or in the classic learning structure where all parties come together to promote a collaborative environment for learning. Remember, at all times, Milka has instructed the teacher to only intervene when necessary and when requested by the students. I'm very happy to learn, to know that the lessons in the book are consistent with the primary school curriculum of Trinidad and Tobago. That is one of the major selling points of the book for me and should be for many parents as well. Another feature of the book that I love is the motivational stimulus, which begins each lesson. Milka explains that it is intended to create and sustain 
interest in the student and help him or her to stay focused. It also allows the student to bear in mind exactly what he is expected to know by the end of each lesson. It is a tool that I myself always find to be extremely valuable. And I know that stimulus will make a big difference in the attitude that the child brings to the lesson. Then, ladies and gentlemen, just take a look, if you can, to the index of the book. It gives you a comprehensive preview of the contents of the book. It reassures parents, teachers, and the students themselves that they are receiving detailed information and guidance to bring mathematics to life for them. It is like a collector's volume to be handed down through the ages to all the children who pass through a home. Milka identifies certain objectives that she would like to accomplish in this book, and they resonate with me. I am so very excited by every one of them, but three of them especially I find appropriate. Not only does she promise that the book will aid in my grandson's understanding of maths and mine too, but it will help us to make connections with maths in the real world. The activities will also allow us to discover maths for ourselves and the rules and formula for Malay will help us to remember and we will become creative thinkers and be able to solve problems. These objectives recall for me a conversation I had with Milka when I called to congratulate her about publishing the book. I told her I was recently repeating to family members about how I heard Dr. Mackenzie years and years ago say how she taught her much children when she was a teacher. This was for them to have a better understanding of the subject. She said she took them out on the football field and the cricket pitch, showed them the circumference and the length of the ball and all of that. And by the time they were done, every child knew and understood the basic concepts of maths. That is what Milka meant in stating that one of her objectives was making connections between maths and the real world. She and I explored all the other places and vocations that could help young students develop the understanding of maths. All of the building trades, carpentry, masonry, seamstress measuring, fashion and graphic design, cooks, farming, fishing, nursing, doctors, and all them centimeter wounds. And we could go on and on. I heard one over there. We could go on and on. All those are trades that are taxi drivers, vendors, shopkeepers, market people. We could take them students all about and start them up that way. So I got Milka to promise me that she will write another book, and I heard talk about it, which will bring out all these various trades and how what they do is really maths. How many of us have um, hired a mason and <laughs> went time to measure? All you know about that? Can't measure to tell you how we arrive at the 20,000 or whatever figure that he charged you. I, I know you all know that story. So Milka assured me that that book is coming. Right. right, so we look forward to it. I also shared with her another that spoken word on Calypso is another tool and I sang a calypso I had composed for my son over 20 years ago, and he too was having difficulty with maths. If, if I didn't reach so late, I would have belt it out here for him. <laughs> this book will make a significant impact, ladies and gentlemen, on children's maths education, and indeed their understanding of its relevance to issues that confront them. It can stimulate and trigger their ability to create 
and sought great heights in their various disciplines, including science, technology, and engineering. To think it is locally produced right here in Tobago is the most uplifting part of all. Congratulations, Milka. Sorry for coming late. I didn't mean to embarrass you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that stunning. <laughs> Thanks for that stunning review. Thanks for that stunning review, Mrs. Deborah Moore Miggins. Right, so we'll have our tributes where esteemed audience, members of the audience, could provide feedback to the author or might have burning questions. So we'll start with the handsome Dawson Stewart. Dawson Stewart is a past student in the class where Mrs. Robinson Reed would have had a 100% pass rate for the then called common entrance using some of these strategies available in the book. So let's welcome Dawson Stewart. A pleasant good evening to each and every one. It is, it is a great pleasure to be given the opportunity to speak about the great accomplishment that we are gathered here this evening to endorse. I know this evening will leave us all in high spirit knowing that our future generation is secure and well equipped with the necessary tools needed for a bright future. The Maths and I Mathematics Workbook was an authored by our very own Mrs. Melka Robinson Reed. Firstly, let me express my utmost admiration and appreciation for her exceptional teaching skills, particularly in the field of mathematics at our schools. Throughout our academic years, you have consistently demonstrated outstanding expertise and dedication in imparting mathematical knowledge to us your ability to simplify complex and concept and present them in an engaging manner have greatly contributed to our understanding and enjoyment of the subject. Your teaching method goes beyond conventional approach. You have consistently engaged active participation, foster critical thinking, and provide a supportive learning environment that nurtured our individual strengths. Your patience and willingness to address our questions and concerns have made a significant impact on our confidence and overall academic growth. What sets you apart as an exceptional math teacher is your unwavering passion for the subject. Your enthusiasm is contagious and it has motivated us to embrace challenges and strive for excellence. Strive for excellence, sorry. Your commitment is our success in, is evident in the countless hours you have dedicated and prepared engaging lessons, providing helpful resources and offering additional support whenever needed. Your impact extends beyond the classroom. You have inspired many of us to pursue further study in mathematics and related field, igniting a genuine interest and curiosity that will undoubtedly shape our future academic and professional paths. On behalf of all the students whose lives you have influenced, I want to express our deepest gratitude. Your exceptional teaching skills have made math more accessible and enjoyable. It has also empowered us with the necessary skills to excel in our areas of our academic journey. Thank you, Mrs. Melka Robinson Reed, for your unwavering dedication, your passion for teaching, and for being an incredible role model. Your exceptional math teaching skills will undoubtedly leave a lasting legacy in the hearts and minds of your students. With profound appreciation and warm regards, we thank you. Wow, thanks for those passionate expressions, Dawson. 
Wow. <laughs> I'm also a past student too, so I could have um, related with, you know, some of the stuff that Dawson shared. Next we'll have Miss Ivo Iforonke Deidre Prescott. She's also a Twig or Tobago Writer Skill member. Author as well, just as Mrs. Reed, YouTuber. I started looking at some of your, your, your interviews. So we now welcome you to provide a tribute. Hello there. Good evening, all. Today, it is my privilege to honor a woman who is a walking testament to the enduring spirit of human potential, Mrs. Milka Robinson Reed. Milka's story isn't just about academic ability or community leadership. It is about resilience. As a child, she was bullied and faced the unkindness of both her peers and adults, even within the sacred halls of her church. She was labeled a decorated broomstick and locked in a school toilet with a wet floor for hours. Yet, it was in that dark moment that she found the light a guiding memory of her great aunt telling her, where your head could pass, your body will follow. Amen. With this newfound hope, she wiggled her way out of that room, not just physically, but metaphorically, from the confinements of societal prejudices and into the expansive realm of self-belief. That resilience has brought her to where she is today. Yes. 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 A master of educational psychology, a fine artist, an author, and a community leader. Her 35 years of experience in education has touched countless lives, from primary classrooms to tertiary lecture halls. Her recent book, Max and I, is more than just a book. It captures her life's mission to empower. But Milka's talents are not confined to numbers and equations. They spill over into the arts and community. Whether she was serving as the president of the Calder Hall Community Council, or crafting a collection like Important Moments Episodic Tobago, her commitment to enriching lives is constant. Today, as we gather to celebrate the launch of Matt Sanai, let us also celebrate the determined spirit of Milka Robinson Reed. Her life is a vivid illustration that no matter what obstacles you face, what labels are put upon you, or how confined you feel, you can emerge victorious. Amen. Now before we conclude, let's reflect on the words of Milka's great aunt. Where your head can pass, your body will follow. This simple yet powerful wisdom holds true for each and every one of us. It serves as a reminder that our minds are the forerunners of our reality. If we can conceive it, we can achieve it. Amen. So let today not just be about celebration of Milka, but also a moment for all of us to realize that we too have the capacity to turn adversity into triumph, to change our thoughts into actions, and to realize our dreams. Milka, your journey serves as a powerful reminder that resilience and determination have the power to turn even the most bitter experiences 
into a life filled with purpose and clarity. Congratulations, Milko. Your com on your accomplishment and, how and on being a beacon of inspiration to us all. May you continue to change lives and challenge norms for many more years to come. God's continued blessings to you, Milka. And to all of us, as we journey through life with the wisdom that where our heads can pass, our bodies will surely follow. Thanks for those enchanting expressions. I um, would like to acknowledge all the participants who would have worked in the production of the books. Yes, so we have the author, editor, Danali Robinson Boatswain. Unfortunately, she is not here today. Latoya Roberts, is she here? Latoya Roberts. She would have been one of the of books by LR. She was one of the editors as well. Formatting of the book would have been Latoya Roberts as well. Graphics would have been Melka Robinson Reed and Danali Robinson Boatswain. Organization Melka and Danali and Sophie Gilliam. So we invite Sophie to come up to us. <laughs> Cover design Melka Robinson and Akina Frank George. Come on up. Right, so um, the, in, the, in the video trailer, we would have had Avian Parks doing the voicing, so she would have also participated. And of course, with the video trailer, we would have also had Akina giving a poem there, the poets, and New Lens video production for the video trailer. So let's all well, um, give thanks to them. So we're just gonna have a toast, so just give a few minutes so that we'll get the, the glasses. We all have glasses in our hands. One of the things I must say about the book, the students could do the work on their own, guided discovery, as well as students who may have difficulty reading. Here is where the teacher would be able to fit in and to support those children. So it caters for differentiated instruction, I guess. Another thing I like about the book, the similar can are or as areas within the curriculum. So you have a little bit of agriculture coming in there, things that are real life and practical. So I, for this term, I myself as an educator have already started, you know, piggybacking on some of the ideas to execute in my classroom. Yeah. That inquiry, inquiry base is something I would do. Problem base, give them a question, something in real life, you know quite fitting. So I'm thinking everybody has a glass in hand. We have some lovely people at the entrance.
So, ladies and gentlemen, let's raise our glasses. Yes. Everybody has a glass? Let's go. So, let's go. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Nice. So, Mrs. Malika Robinson would like to give gratitude, express her gratitude to those persons who would have assisted her. Nice. They could be seated. Wait, wait, the mic. Mic. At this point in time, I want to say thank you to Akina, Sophie, and, da and Danali. I'm sorry Danali isn't here. She has a flu that is going around. Kaiwan has braved it. <laughs> right? Thank you very much for being of service to me. Sometimes I wake you all up in the night or like that on your job you stay away from your job sometimes just to give me the assistance and i appreciate it so very much and as for as long as my i live i will always remember you and to see that you all are young people and you make me feel really happy and tonight, I want to say thank you. Nice. So we'll have a vote of thanks. I'll do, I'll do the vote of thanks. Just want to thank all the specially invited guests. We'd have like we like to thank um, Matthew Robinson and Daniel Robinson for the opening prayer and song inspiration. Okay. Right. Okay. Nice. So we'll have Miss Winnet doing the vote of thanks. <laughs> Come on up. Right. So a quick next little mat fact. From zero to 1,000, there is one number that has the letter A in it. Think of it. From zero to 1,000, only one of those numbers have zero in it. So we have, have A, A, the letter A, the letter A in the word. So we we'll can think about it while we start. Jesus. What? Oh, good, all a good boy. Nice. Right. A pleasant good evening to all. Today I am very proud, extremely proud, for my friend Melka Robinson Reed. My Kimo Savi, <laughs> I call her that. Um when she launched the first book, I was not around. So I could not participate in this activity. So today I'm thankful that I'm here to participate. Um, before I move my vote of thanks, I just want to say two things. One, she taught my son Dawson here at school. That's, that you would have heard such. And when she was finished with him, he gained a new name. Does he remember the name? You remember the name? You remember the name? Ben Carson. <laughs> he became Ben Carson. Right. Um, so that's to tell you. Melka is really good at what she does. 
Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Ben Carson, I think every student and every teacher, every student and every teacher must read that book. Think big. I mm. use that book with, with that class at Dawson and whoever was in, right? Because when those children came to me, the boys could not read. And the girls who were very good in, in, in English and comprehension, all the reading subjects, the girls who were strong in it. And they used to tease the boys. And I decided I'm, I had to do something. <laughs> so, at, so what I did, I put a girl to sit with a boy, a girl, a boy, a girl, a boy. And I got that book, um, Think Big, and I allowed the better readers, who would, who would have been the girls, to read the book every morning before we started work. And at the end of it all, no, how I knew, knew it had an impact on them, one day I, I reached the school late. And I told them, well, we won't read the book this morning because I'm late. They said, we read it already. Yeah. Yes, they read the book. And they formed their own club. They brought books, and I, I, I augment the books, you know? And they had their own club, and they used to come in and read and read and read. So that is how the Ben Carson came about. But I can recall them calling him Ben Carson. Yeah. Yeah, eventually, that is the class that I was, that I was able to get a hundred percent. Everybody in the class passed. And I recall one supervisor came a day and she, she, she threatened them. She gave them a challenge, I should say. If you all pass the exam, everybody will come back with ice cream for you all. And they took it serious, you know. When the results came out, by the third day they didn't see her and they, they, they gave her a name, eh? the flash, because she said she would come with a flash. <laughs> so on the, on the fourth day they said, Miss, where the flash? <laughs> I, had to call the, I had to call her and she came with the ice cream. <laughs> Right, the, th the second thing is that Melka would have motivated me as a teacher in the classroom. I admired her so much. She, she doesn't know about this. She rubbed off on me because every class Melka goes to teach, she had to make a thousand and one resources. She had to ensure and plan her work. And she sought to meet every child in the classroom. And I was happy for that because I started making my resources as well. Staying up in the night, cutting if I had to cut a hundred little triangles. But when you get to school, every child should have one and that was her. All right? And I didn't tell you about the resources that she made that she said she would have um, published someday. Yeah, she and all forget about it. She had uh, resources where she could have taught um, not the solids, the fractions and also decimals. Decimals and um, tens, um, rounding, rounding. And I don't know what became of that. I asked her the other day what happened to them. She and all forget about them. But you'll find it back someday, and I hope that you could, um, you know, Go ahead and make your resources. Right, so back to the basics. To Mr. Daniel Robinson, who would have um, prayed for us this afternoon, I want to say thanks to him for bringing God's word into the midst. In all that we do, we have to give thanks, and thanks is ex extended to him. Matthew, Mr. Robinson, um, to you also, we say thanks for leading us in that song. 
um, the two sisters, the songbirds, um, Blossom and April, beautiful voices. I am happy to know that you are using it in a positive light, right? It is a pity that you had to wait till mom died in order to use it. But nonetheless, huh? since before, I think, based on what I heard, so I'm sorry, I apologize, and I am happy that you are doing that, and you will go from strength to strength, okay? Um, Miss Lynette Wilshire, thanks for opening our eyes to those students who have problems. We know of it, you know, but we tend to ignore it, and I am glad that Melka would have made an effort to try to solve the problem. Um, I expect Lynette to follow. <laughs> and probably when she follow, I might follow. You never know. All right, so thanks um, for bringing that to light. Um, our feature speaker, speaker Dr. Verlin Bob Lewis, once my principal. Dr. Bob, <laughs> you forget about that? <laughs> All right. Um, thank you for all the positives that you would have said about Mrs. Reed. I know of them. And for letting others know about her greatness. I know that Melka would go from strength to strength in her endeavors. And I trust that all of us will accept her and encourage her along the way. So Dr. Bob, thanks for. <clears throat> to Miss Patricia Nicholson, I have it right, who did the interview with Mrs. Reed. I thank you for interviewing her and bringing out all the challenges that she had with the book and all. So thanks again. This is Mom Higgins, who did the review. And uh, I thank you for your presence. Even though you were late, we still understood all that you had. And I, I realized that you did go through the book because I did and I saw that you did um, present some of the positives in the book. So parents, you know exactly that there's good stuff in there. Mr. Dawson Stewart, my student, my, and the student, and my son, thank you. I didn't know you could have write well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thanks for your words of um, advice and comfort to Mrs. Reed, who was beaming in the corner there. All right, um, if I, what? Miss Deirdre Prescott, oh yes. Thank you as well for coming and uh, I saw you brought tears to my friend eyes, <laughs> right? But all in good steps, All right. And to our chairperson, our able chairperson, who would have taken us to, to this evening's session. Product of Melka Reed as well. Student, niece, and my child as well. <laughs> All right, she, she would have done an excellent job this afternoon and we give her thanks. And hope you continue along that way. I think you have a um, footing in this direction. All right, and to all those who are here present, I do not want to leave anyone out to our media personnel as well. I give you all special thanks. As we leave here, let us all get home safely with God's blessings and a good and night to all.
Okay, Jess. Um, wait, here. I, I cannot be periodically Thank you. Auntie. Dr. Bob. Just so. Dr. Bob has been my motivator to get me into tertiary level. I recall um, eight districts in Grenada and Tobago, education districts, we were to send, each district had to send four persons to represent the district to our workshop. Education then didn't have the money to send me. And I told myself, the seven districts, you know, would send their four teachers and Tobago has nobody to send, I would go. So I spent my money and I went. Paid for my lodging, everything, everything. For two weeks. And uh, those who went to the workshop, the four persons from each district had uh, to do the workshop that was presented to us, whatever was presented to us, we had to do it in our district. I was the only person from Tobago. But from the second day, there was a group, I think it was Toko. Toko only had two persons. And we had to do our presentation on the second day. Every district did theirs. I went up last as usual. And by the time it was finished, the two from Toko wanted to join my group. <laughs> yeah. And the last day, all they did was just tell us what was constructivism at the time. What is constructivism, what have you. And on the last day, we had to do a presentation, writing a lesson to to give an example of what constructive is and how we could use it, what have you. Well, it's I alone, the others had their people, and they sat down and they think. But because I was accustomed teaching my way, I used it. I realized it's, that is what I was doing at the time, constructivism. So I went and I did my presentation. When I was finished, the consultant, like he was embarrassed, he came, he came behind my ear and he said, Miss Reed, excellent, is you alone understand? <laughs> <laughs> the curriculum officer, and this, by this time I was taking down my charts that I used to run to catch the plane to come home, it was Friday evening. The, the, the curriculum officer came on the next side, she said, Miss Reed, Wonderful. <laughs> you understood. <laughs> you understand? And I sat on that plane and I cried so much. Why? There was nobody in Tobago who saw what I did, how I represented my little island so well because I then had to tell the others, right? All about constructivism. And I was able to come home do the workshop by myself. And this goodly lady, they kept, they were impressed. They kept a little party at the end for me. And this goodly lady get up and she said, I don't know this, I don't know this lady at all. I just, I don't know her. And then she came to me and she said, Miss Reed, you are teacher training college stuff. You go and do a master's, right? Was a master's or a bachelor's, you don't remember. Yes, go and do a master's and then apply to go to teach, to teach in training college. And I don't regret one day. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we'll have a closing prayer by Matthew. Matthew Robinson. Good afternoon again, everyone. We can stand as we have a closing prayer. 
I must say I'm, um, I'm already I'm also thankful to you among you wonderful people. I know that we have enjoyed the afternoon, and I pray that we enjoy the rest of the night. And we pray that God will bless and keep us to another day. Father, we thank you this afternoon for your love to us. It is your love that keeps us. And we are so happy and thankful to you, O oh Lord, that you are still making us to be the people you want us to be. So we ask you, Lord, that you will continue to touch our hearts and our lives. Forgive us where we have sinned. And as we move on from today, we ask, Lord, that you will continue to be with us. May we find the strength and true spirit in serving you. We are thankful today for our sister America, who, have, who is the reason why we all are here this afternoon. Continue to bless her and bless her work and bless her efforts. Help us to always rally around her. Father, I pray tonight, as we all go from this place, that your holy angels will go with us. Protect our lives, protect us from the, the means, the mean, the meanest out there. Help us to put our trust in you, Lord, and we go through this night and keep us to another day. Give us a wonderful night rest. But I must ask you to take us home safely. Bless our families. Bless us on the way. Keep us and protect us from all harm, accidents, and dangers. May we all have success in our lives. And to those of us who have seen hard times, Father, or terrible times, or dung times, I pray, Lord, that you will bless us, that we will rise above and let all these times be a courage to us. When you shall come in our glorious kingdom and none of us here be found wanting, but bless us and give us a place with you in your kingdom, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it was our honor to be asked to be the master of ceremony this evening. It was precious, priceless, invaluable, simply beautiful. We now invite you to enjoy delectable appetizing treats while you purchase and have your autographs done by Melka. We kindly ask that you please follow the guidelines of the servers. I'm Doniel Robinson Phillips to enjoy the remainder, remainder of the evening. The books are available on Amazon and from the author. Please order.